bless the name of the Lord today. Are you excited to be here? Hallelujah. Uh, I was listening when people were talking about what they have learned. That's, that's very powerful, you know, to know that people, they still remember even the teachings that were done last time and other teachings that we learn here. It is very much important. We don't learn to forget. Hallelujah. We learn to live the word of God. The word of God, we don't learn it to forget it. We learn it to live it. All right? So it is very much important. I'm somebody who, who I'm sold out or I, I completely believe in consistency. I don't believe in just this and that and this and that. We do that sometimes for the benefit of, of people, but I believe you me, I don't believe in that. You never build like that. Okay? You know, you don't build and put three lines and then thinking of putting the couches where it's just three lines when you're building the house. You must build and come to the windows and build and put the roof. All right? And then you put the furniture that is required. But if you want to build and just put some lines there and just start to put furniture in the inside. It's not wrong to put furniture in the house, but you need to know when to put furniture in the house. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then to grow as a child of God, as a father, as a son, we need consistency. You know, we, we need to come and ask a question, say, what do you know where faith is concerned? Where hope is concerned? What do you know where love is? You cannot just give bits and pieces of everything. All right? I'd rather learn one thing until I master it and leave it than just to, to know, you know, the jack of all trades. <laughs> you know bits and pieces of everything, but you are expert in nothing. You can't live life like that. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we need to be consistent to know what are we building, what are we growing in. So when I was hearing people talk, it means people are living what they are learning what they are being taught. It's not just about coming to church and write notes and go home and come and write. No, 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 no. We must build consistency. So even today, I'm used to tonight. <laughs> yes. Even today, it's not going to be any different. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. And God is going to help us. Hallelujah. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy. I'll tell you the chapter, but I want us to to be free, be free. Don't be too much formal and just just be free. We are in the presence of the Lord. The Bible says, in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. There is liberty. Hallelujah. So that's why we are here, to receive more of liberty. So today we are going to learn under the simple theme that we're going to get in the word of God, which we're going to read. Let's read uh, it's Deuteronomy chapter 1. Are you there? Others are still searching. Let's find it and that when we read, everybody is seeing what we are reading. Deuteronomy chapter 1. Are we there? Amen. Chapter 1, let's read. We are going to read verse 6. It says, I'm reading from the NLT version. When we were at Mount Sinai, the Lord our God said to us, You have stayed at this mountain long enough. It is time to break camp and move on. Go to the hill country of the Amorites and to all the neighboring regions, the Jordan Valley, the hill country, the western foothills, the Negev, and the coastal plain. Go to the land of the Canaanites and to Lebanon and all the way to the great Ephraim. Look, I am giving 
all this land to you. Go in and occupy it. For it is the land the Lord saw to give to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all their descendants. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the reading of your word, the sword of the Spirit, in the name of Jesus. I know this word is for me. That's why I'm here, to receive and to hear from you. No evil, no demon can block me from receiving what the Lord has purposed for me to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. We are talking about today, if you want the theme, I love people who write. Everybody's writing. Thank you, Jesus. Let's clap hands for ourselves. Everybody's writing. It's very much important. It's time to move on. That's the theme. It's time to move on. Last time, here we spoke about you can't give excuse anymore. <laughs> it's, it's not time to give excuse. <laughs> it's time now to move on. Amen. Uh, when I was I was meditating just alone, I realized that we there's a lot of things that need to be reprogrammed in the mind of people for success, to be reprogrammed for success. Most of the people, we are not successful because of the way we've been programmed. You know, once you are programmed to a certain thing, it's unfortunate. If you are programmed for wrong thing, it doesn't matter how much time you can do it. It remains wrong. And you'll always be unsuccessful as far as unsuccessful is concerned. So there's a whole lot of things that need to be reprogrammed to the mind of many. And especially to us as children of God, there are things that need to be reprogrammed in our mind. And uh, I've realized that if you confuse men, then you confuse the world. If man is confused, then the whole world is confused. Simply because of the position that God has entrusted to us as men. So if we are confused, then the whole world is going to be confused. <laughs> if we are programmed wrong, then the whole world will be wrong. Why? Because people who are in the forefront, they are confused and they are, they are believing wrong. But wha the other thing that I've learned is that I if you can take an apple seed from here and you go and plow it in another province or in another continent, even outside Africa. How many of you know that that apple seed, even if you plant it in Europe, it will still produce apples? <laughs> it doesn't matter where. <laughs> Simply because the life that is in the seed is of what? Of an apple. So it doesn't matter where you plant it. But the growing of apple, whether you're going to have an apple that you desire or you're going to have an apple that you cannot even eat yourself, it's more on you, on how do you take care of the seed, regardless of the ground where the seed is planted. If you plant it in the rough area, then you need to know what to do to cultivate the soil that is rough in order to still have desirable results as far as apple are concerned. It's not much about where I am, this and that. No, no, no. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the word of God. The word of God works everywhere. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter the situation that you're in. The word of God works everywhere. So, But you just need to know how to work the word. <laughs> for the word to work for you, you must know how to work the word. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, work the word. Yeah, because if you don't that's why you see other people, you can have the very same seed in the hand and plow it. Somebody in there, it becomes better than, you know, most of the things that you plow, some of you can't even sell them because you don't even like them. But others, 
they do those things and they have bountiful fruit, bountiful harvest to the point of going out and even make business and sell the very same thing that you are having an opportunity to can plow. All right? So, the word of God, don't believe that, I was talking to Elder Brian, last night we were talking, that don't believe those things of saying, as a child of God, sometimes you're going to have some tough and rough seasons where things are not working, and you're going to have some other seasons that are flourishing. It is not from the word of God. You see, it's the programming of a person. Other people are programmed like that, to say, Sometimes things are going to be very rough. Sometimes things are going to be very difficult. Sometimes things does not work. But it is not the word of God. The word of God said, those who are planted by the rivers of water, they bear fruit in every season, in all seasons. So most of the people, they are programmed based on, on what people say or what you have heard. Ask your neighbor, who, who told you? What you know. <laughs> you know, that becomes very problem. And that's what the Bible talks about, what? Tradition. That because of your tradition, you make the word of God of no effect. It doesn't matter how many times, how much you can be told that this thing works. But if you are programmed differently, it's going to be difficult for you to believe that. And unfortunately, it's going to work for those that believe that it works. That's why you see people, we can be multitude here. We have somebody come and bring a good concept, say, this is how it can do to, to, to raise money. Everybody, let's come. This is what is happening. Let's get involved. And somebody just say, oh, no, this thing, don't just believe everything that you hear. And others, they believe. And then you see others in the front, and you go and borrow from them. But you started in the very same level. That is a problem. So that's why I'm saying most of the people, most of us, we have to be, to be reprogrammed so that we believe right. We must have the right mentality where different things are concerned. And as a child of God, you cannot believe like people of the world. We cannot just, yes, the Bible says we are in this world, but we are not of this world. Are we affected by things that happen in this world? Yes. We pay bills like other people pay bills, right? We pay rent like other people pay rent. We still, but we, the way we respond to situation that we come across, it should not be just like people of the world. Because the one that is in us is greater than the one that is in the world. The one that is influencing people that are in the world. The one that is influencing us is greater than the one that is influencing people that are in the world. So you need to know, we need to know, I need to know how to be. In my conscience, I need to know what am I believing and how did I come to believe what I believe? How did I reach that point where I'm believing? I must have the right consciousness as far as moving forward is concerned because if you don't have that, it doesn't matter how many times you can be prayed for. If you don't have the right mentality concerning, there are other people who don't believe that you can be healed. So when they're not healed, it's not because God cannot heal them, but they just believe that for me, I cannot be healed. There are other people who just believe that I can't be successful because my father never was never successful and my brother was never successful. My mother never was never successful. So Obvious, I will never be successful. That's the wrong way of believing as a child of God. You cannot, because you are a child of God. Now, your perception should be based on what God said about you. Not what the family said about you. And the challenge is that many people then we become religious people. Religious people will just come and hear what others say about something and just run with it. But we have never find it ourselves, exactly. We, we have never really find it ourselves that does this thing, you know, you remember the book of John chapter 4? When Jesus was sitting with the Samaritan woman. Jesus spoke to a Samaritan woman. And she was so convicted of Jesus. What did she do? She ran. And thank God she went, to, she went for men. She ran and go and call and tell all the men. She tell all the men. Those men, the Bible said, they left their families and they follow that woman. 
But when they arrived where Jesus was, they wanted to hear Jesus speaking. After they heard what Jesus was speaking, what did they say? Woman, we heard you at first, but now we have heard him for ourselves. So we are not believing Jesus on the basis of what you said. We are believing Jesus on the basis of what we have heard of him ourselves. Other people are living in condemnation, despondent life, hopeless life, based on what somebody look at you and give you the definition of who you are. Tell your neighbor, give them your definition before they define you. <laughs> All right? So, here where we have read, the Bible says God became concerned about Israel. It was not wrong for them to be in Mount Sinai. <laughs> it's God who said they must go to Mount Sinai. But they reached a point where God even himself said, Hey, you have stayed here <laughs> long enough. You've been here for more than the expected time for you to be here. It is time for you to move on because there is a place that I've already prepared for you, which you're supposed to go to. You're supposed to go and possess that place. You are not just supposed to talk about it from a distance. It's time for you to break the camps and move and go to that which I've prepared for you. I've promised it to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that I'm going to give you. And you are the generation to possess it. But you are still staying where you first received the word. The word that you received, yes, it was good. But the word you received, it was to lead you to your position. It was not just for you to stand there and remain there. That's why other people can be in a situation for a very long time. <laughs> Unnecessary. Other people go through problems to the point that when you cancel them and deliver them, they, they go back because they feel like not having problem is wrong. Well, they just... <laughs> just stay for so long. And you build a hedge and you build some, some statement to sustain why you are still where you are and to, to fortify why you are not moving forward. But I'm going to break those camps. Move forward. Go, go, go forward where you'll be able to possess that which I've promised to your forefathers. You have stayed long enough. Chapter 2 also of the very same book. Somebody read it. Maybe you think it's in my Bible only. Chapter 2, verse 2. The same thing again. Let's hear what God said. Where are the, those microphones that they taken? Whoever find it, just Deuteronomy again, chapter 2, verse 3. <laughs> hey, you've been wandering around in this hill country long enough. How, will, how long will you go through the very same situation you've been going through? For how long? You know, let me tell you, it's easy to know whether you are moving forward or, or you, are, you are moving in the same circle. This is how you, you know. If you are moving, you think you are going forward, but you keep seeing the very same thing, and you convince yourself that you are moving forward, <laughs> something is not right. If you keep seeing the very same thing now and again, you are not moving forward. Yes, you are moving, but not moving forward. We are talking about moving forward. The theme is not about move. No, it's about move forward. If you keep seeing the same thing, you keep going through the same thing, it's a sign enough you are not making progress. As a father, as a son, if I keep going through the same thing, 
Now and again, last year, it was the very same thing. Two years ago, it was the very same thing. I am not making progress. If I was angered by the thing that was angering me five years ago, even today, I am not making any progress. Over this hill country, I'm just moving around. And I'm getting tired thinking I'm moving forward. But I'm not moving forward. I'm moving around. The Bible does not say move around. There are many people that we are just moving, moving. And you know what? You get tired by moving thinking you're making progress. You just see. You are just moving. You are just moving. Maybe, you know, I don't know. We are, we are, I love this. We, okay, we are, we are a generation of miracles. We believe in miracles. A whole lot. But you know, there is no miracle that you're going to get of moving forward if you. <laughs> and so one day, God will make a miracle. I'll find myself there. I am praying. I've started by seven days fasting prayer. Now I must increase. I'm doing 14. I'm going to do 21. I'm going to 40. What are you believing God for there? It's not going to happen. The Bible says break the camps and let's move forward. The definition of insanity is to keep doing the very same thing, expecting different results. <laughs> There are things that you must look at and say, this thing is not working. I'm just doing this thing. This thing is not working. It's a sign. It's a sign enough that I must leave this thing and move forward. Ask your neighbor, are you moving forward or you are just moving? <laughs> what is the difference between the you now and the you last year? The problem is that people want to sustain their conditions, you know. Now you understand, things will happen when God wants them to happen. No. When God tells you an instruction and you don't do it, don't say things will happen when God wants it to happen. He told you how things will happen. When he say move, and he say, I will move. No, God is not saying that. He say move now. When God say move, you move. David say, Lord, when you say seek, Ye my face, my answer will be, Lord, your face will be seeking. Now, I will seek it now. When God says, seek my face, he say, you do it now. If God say left, you see, you had, can you read that? He, he even told them where to go. I love God. God don't work in vacuum. <laughs> God, God is very precise. There is no one here who can say, you know, I inquired from Jesus. He told me things that I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. If you are not sure what you're supposed to do, go back to him and say, Lord, you told me things that I don't even know what to do about it. Because God is precise. When he gives you instruction and order, this is, listen what he said. What did he say? Hold on. He is even telling them where they've spent much time wandering around. He does not say you've been wandering around. He says you've been wandering around here. So even you, you must check, what is it? Where have you been wandering around which has been come too long now? Huh? Just look at your life. Just look at yourself. Don't you think there are some areas that you've been, you know, you've been wandering around. It's been too long now. In that word, you'll add, you know where you've been wandering around for quite long. Other people say, I will leave it. I will leave it. No, I will stop it. I will stop it. No, just stop it. Something. I will start it. I will start it. I will start it. No, just start it. It's taking too long. Hmm? Some of you say, I know God will use me. Will use me when? You are not growing younger. You've got to do it now. When God tells you, he say, now, move from this hill country. Let's say, did he say, you will see where to go. <laughs> Turn to the north. What is the instruction and the direction of your life now? Which side are you supposed to turn to now? 
Because if you don't know and you are here, then you are doing it. We just come to church and who said that too? Tell them he spoke something. You just you, know, you just come to church and we worship God and we love God and we are puffed up here. It's a good thing. What a fellowship. What a wonderful fellowship. It was powerful. When you go outside, <laughs> there's no progress. If you are being delivered from the thing that you are still being delivered from since when the grace started in 2014, even today, there's no progress. God wants us to move forward. Can somebody say, let's move forward? Yes, but then moving forward is not something, we want to check something. It's not something I just say, let's pray to move forward. That's what Christians love, right? Pastor, lay hands on me to move forward. <laughs> we love that. Just speak a word and lay hands. Moving forward cannot come by that. Eh? Do you know that even for them to move forward, they had to walk? Hmm? When you say move forward, they did not just, he did not just carry them and they found themselves in the front line. No, they had to move. He even told them the scripture that we read. He told them what they will pass through, where they will go, their neighbors that they will pass. So he knows. So God knows. When God says move forward, he knows. So when you are going through some things, when you are moving forward, don't drop the ball and say, Lord, what is happening now? No, God say, move forward. Move forward. It doesn't matter. You know, sometimes, especially when you're a man, and God say, move forward, and you stop moving forward, because people know, I can't move forward, because, you know, I was trying to move forward, and people do this and that. Please, you are putting the world into confusion. You're supposed to move forward based on what God said, not based on what is happening. When God says move forward, we move forward. Ask your neighbor, do you really believe the word of God? When he says move forward, he's saying move forward. Even if you come across something that is difficult, but move forward. Whether it becomes hard, but move forward. You see people sitting down. I don't, I don't understand this, especially with men. Let me tell you, when we are men, we go through a situation and we sit down and we drop the ball. We confuse the whole entire generation. Can you begin to think bigger than you? Hmm? Can you begin to think bigger than you that, you know what, if I drop the ball here, I'm not just dropping the ball for myself. I'm dropping the ball for the whole generation that is entrusted on me. And I'm teaching the wrong lesson. So, I want us to look at something here. Let's go to the book of First Chronicles. David, David, can we say David? You know, do you know David in the Bible, right? There is something that I want to learn quickly here. David, I love this book. When David is chapter 12, First Chronicles chapter 12. When David was in Ziklag, he was being trained by God. Going through situations after situations. Tough times after tough times. But God gave him the word that to the point that if David could have not taken what God said, David could have died in Ziklag. <laughs> and it was not the will of God for David to die in Ziklag. Because Ziklag, it was a place of what? Of training. You are not supposed to die in training. You must go where you must operate. You don't just get trained. Why do we get trained? We are getting trained in order to go and operate on what we've been trained for, isn't it? It's not just about being trained. So when he was going through that, God gave him a word. 
Because God sees that this man now, he has went through it. He has learned the ways of the Lord. He has learned what God wants him to learn. But now it's time to move forward, to move out and go ahead, to break the camps, get out of Ziklag. Let's continue. Let's read First Chronicles chapter 12. Can you read verse 22? Verse 23. Listen to this. When David was, 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 was in Ziklag, God told him to move from Ziklag to go to Hebron. And David moved on the basis of the instruction of the Lord. And when he do that, David didn't invite anybody. <laughs> the Bible says men begin to join David until it becomes such an army like an army of God. Every time when God gives you an instruction and you walk on it, you attract favor. When you want to see a man who walk outside the favor of God, it's when God tells you to do something and you go and do your own thing and expect God to help you. He's not involved anymore. David was told to go to Hebron by God. When he went to Hebron, when he arrived in Hebron, soldiers, not just warriors, armed, armed warriors. When you walk in the instruction of God as a father, as a son, God begins to align you with people who will help you with what you need. You don't sweat for it. You don't have to steal it. You don't have to bribe anybody for it. You don't have to corner people for about to con people for it. As long as you walk on what God said, walk on, God opened the door of favor to align you with necessary people who have necessary tools and necessary material for you to move on. David didn't convince anybody that he's supposed to be a king. The Bible says these people. Because they knew what God said concerning David. These people were eager to see David becoming a king than Saul. David didn't teach them that, hey, look at me. I want to be a king. Look at Saul. You see, Saul will not do you good. I am the king. I know I'm, from the, son, I'm the son of Jesse. Look at me. Come and support me. No, no. David just walked on what the Lord said. When he walked on what the Lord said, God opened the warriors to come. Not just warriors. Warriors were armed. And God gave them the spirit and the heart to support. Support David. The Bible said they were eager to see David. Without David campaigning, man. Can you imagine? David didn't campaign that I can be a good leader. You know, no, 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 no. He just did what the Lord told him to do. David moved forward, go to Hebron. He moved. In Hebron, when he arrived there, soldiers came. When you want to move forward, you must move according to what the Lord tell you to do. You will have sweatless victory. <laughs> God knows who do you need in your life in order to achieve what God wants you to achieve. Especially when you want to achieve it's what God purposed for you and he put it in your heart. There's no way that God can say he wants you to achieve this and never put people in line for you to, to help you to achieve that. It doesn't matter which level you might be in. As long as God said, you are going to be this, already there are people who are just waiting for you to obey God in order for them to be released by God. I'm telling you, you can do many prayers as much as you can, but if you want to move forward without an instruction of God, you're not going to make it. When God said, you are going to have this project. Already he knows who's supposed to help you, who's supposed to fund this, who's supposed to do this. But can you hear him when he says move forward? Most of us, when he says move forward, immediately when we move two steps, then we forget the instruction. We want to do it by our own. God said, oh, okay. I thought you know the scripture that say, if God will begin the good work in you, I thought you know that it's God who's going to bring it to pass. 
But now you are taking it upon yourself. You move forward now. The things that, how many times, how many times did we start things and it didn't finish? Just be honest. I'm not going to ask you which way, what did you start. Just raise your hand. How many things did you start and you didn't finish? I'm not even going to ask you why. I'm going to tell you why. When God tells you to start something, it's already finished on the side of God. All you need to do, hear him when he speaks. Obey what he's telling you. You will move forward and you will reach. God told them, the destination is Canaan. Then when he's telling them, being in Egypt, God was seeing what? He was seeing Canaan. And he knew how they're going to go through Canaan. Red Sea was not a problem to God. It was a problem to them. Egyptians were not a problem to God. It was a problem to them. But for that which is not a problem to God, also for it not to be a problem to you, you must align with God. Because how can two work together? Unless they agree. You cannot expect to disagree with God and expect to achieve the result with the hand of God on it. It doesn't work like that. If God said, this is what I want you to achieve, Men, at his will, this is what I want you to do. We owe it to God to God. How do we do this thing? When he said, whatever God's word said, it's a command. When he said north, it's north. And you will see the kind of people that God, oh man, I love this scripture. You will see the kind of people, the kind of warriors that God gave to David. David didn't pray for them. David didn't ask for them. David didn't know what is required for him to achieve this. But God who told him that he will be a king, he has already made it a setup to say, if you will obey me, I will handle the rest. Tell your neighbor, if you obey God, he will handle the rest. That's all we need. To move forward, obey God. He will handle the rest. I want you to see how God handled the rest for David. These soldiers, they come. First thing, they were eager. If you are a person who writes in point form, write it. They were eager. These are the people who say, no matter what, whatever it takes for us to see David being a king, we are here. We are eager. Whether Saul come and say this and say that, we are for David. We are for David. Let's hear. You will go home and read others. Other troops, because they were mentioned and calculated in numbers. But there are two tribes, three, if not three. I want you to see, and I want you to, where do you fall in here? Because when we are moving forward, hey, listen, when we are moving forward, <laughs> when we are moving forward, God can create amongst us groups according to the spirit that is deposited on you in order to achieve the greater vision of God. That's why we have worshippers and we have ushers and we have servants and we have mother's committee, we have father's committee. It's not like everybody's running, it's, it's, it's running their own church. It's still the one church, but we need all this. We need all these dif different departments. So today you will find yourself, where are you for us to move forward? But on the moving forward, they are not, we don't have those who are anointed to draw us back. They are not there. So don't be here to draw us back. They are not there. <clears throat> These are the troops. Let's start about the 32, the verse 32. Let's hear this troop. Let's read it. From the tribe of Issachar. You see? These people, all of them, they are coming to help David. But now they are coming by tribe by tribe. Right? According to what God has gifted them with. Okay? You see, when you come to the house of the Lord, you need to know what is it that you are bringing for us to move forward. Ask your neighbor, what are you going to contribute for us to move forward? What is your contribution to this journey of moving forward? You didn't just come to see it. 
If the doctor was here, she was going to say like a bundle of what you know. <laughs> There's no one who will just come. So from today, after this message, you must know that when you come to church, you are coming to bring something. For, for us to move forward, okay? You are coming to bring something, to add a certain level of value, to go for, for us to go forward. And you must know that when you are absent, you are affecting not just you and your family, but the whole troop that's supposed to move forward. Then coming to church, will, your perception of coming to church will change. Your perception of attending services will change. Because it is your troop that have that particular anointing and skill that is valuable and needed for the troop of God to move forward. Then if you withdraw or you sit down and you cry and you don't move forward, you are affecting not just you and your family, but the whole army of God. Do you really want the army of God to fail on your expense? Okay. Let's hear this, this tribe of Issachar. Mm -hmm. What were, kind of people were they? There were 200 leaders of the tribe with their relatives. You see, they are counted. There were how many? 200 with their relatives. This is the tribe of Issachar. Yes. All these men understood the signs of the times and he knew the best course for Israel to take. Listen this kind. Listen to this kind. This one, the, Issachar, the tribe of Issachar, they understood the time. They knew exactly what Israel ought to do. Are you part of this tribe? <laughs> you might not be in. It's fine. But, <laughs> but in this army, we need people who can see, eh? We need people who know what ought to be done now. Eh? And some of us who cannot really know what's supposed to be done now, let's pay attention to those who know. Because when they hear what's supposed to be done, it's not for their benefit only. It's for the benefit of the army. You see, some of us, when you see other people, who knows and who hear, yeah, who do they think they are? You, you apply the, 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 the spirit of, of Miriam and... Aaron, does God speak to Moses alone? Does he not speak to us? You see, and that attitude affects the whole troop. Because you discourage those who are supposed to hear and those who are supposed to see. And I believe they are here. I believe they are here today. The sons of Issachar. They know, they know what Israel ought to do. They know the time of the best course to say, yes, we are moving, but now this is what we're supposed to do. Yes, we're moving slow. Now it's time to run. They know when they say, hold your peace, hold your peace. Don't shout. Keep quiet. They know what they're talking about. And because we are of the same spirit, we don't compete, but we complement one another. Yes, they are hearing even for us. They are seeing even for us. You know, the best way when you're not seeing, just hold on on the hand of those who see. You will reach where you're supposed to reach. <laughs> don't act like you see if you don't. Don't act like you hear if you don't. If you don't know, it's better to say, hey, I don't know. You know, I'm willing to do something, but I don't know what to do. Because you acting like you know what to do and you do what you don't know, it affects us. Just hold on. Yes. Amongst us, the sons of Issachar are there. They know. We're not going to get lost. They know what we ought to do. They know the best course for us to take. That was the, one of the tribe that was in. Hey. Let's, see, let's go to verse 33. From the tribe of Zebulun, <laughs> there were 50,000 skilled warriors. They were fully armed and prepared for battle and completely loyal to David. Ah, la, la. <laughs> Listen to that. This is another tribe. This one, they were skilled warriors. Huh? They were skilled warriors. You know, 
Look, David didn't pray for these people. But God lined them up for him. They were skilled warriors. You see, amongst us here, there are people who are skilled for different things. Okay? Just because I'm not skilled in that area, I must not <laughs> begin to ridicule those who are skilled in that area. Because their skill benefits the whole army for the army to move forward. Why don't I encourage the, those that are skilled? Do you think I can do everything? Do you think you can do everything? Are you skilled in everything? You need to know when they step in, those who are skilled in this particular area, let's give respect and allow them to do that. Don't criticize them because them not working as skilled, it affects every one of us. And that is the problem with church. Because everyone says, no, no, I can't be told all of us, we are children of God and I can do anything through Christ to strengthen me. But my friend, there are things that you can do. <laughs> there are things you cannot do. There are things that does not come by prayer only. There are things that does not come by fasting only. There are things that does not come by coming to church only. There are things that you have to outsource by going and get it from the necessary institution to get that and come and use it for the kingdom of God. So you go to those churches and say, ah, you know, those people who are educated, they think now church is them that's supposed to run the church. And now you make everybody who is skilled to feel like... When we come to church, you're not supposed to demonstrate anything that the wisdom that God gave you. Just sit down. And who, tell me here, if we have people here, who knows to, to erect the tent? And now we ridicule them, and they sit down with their skill here, and this tent fell. How many people are affected? Is it the people who've got skill only, or is everybody? Tell your neighbor, stop it. Just encourage them. But we can't encourage them if we don't identify them. We need to know. We need to know each other. Do you know that your value is special before God? You. You know, when the man of God was saying here, yeah, you are an individual before God. You, you, you. You know, we were told, you need to know your value. Your value. Your value. You as a person, you are so valuable. You are so... He, he, he loved to say, you, you said... You are important what? You say you are important part of what? Can you use the microphone? You are an important and a necessary part of the body of Christ. Let's clap hands to Jesus for that. You, man, you are. You are very important, necessary part of the body of Jesus Christ. Stop seeing the doing it for Ropiwa or doing it for Pastor Merlin. No, you are part of the body of Jesus Christ. And we must move forward. The Bible says these people, they were fully armed and prepared for battle. Ask your neighbor, how prepared are you for the battle that you are in? Who prepared you? And how were you prepared? He cannot just make assumptions. Fully prepared. These people, they were fully prepared for the battle that is ahead of them. And this way that I love them. The Bible says, and completely loyal. Completely loyal to David. Mm. I, this word. Please, can you read it in the Amplified? I want you to see what does that word completely loyal mean. Before I give you the definition of the Hebrew of the word loyal. That verse 33. I love, I love this tribe of Zebulun. Do we still have people who are loyal? Huh? Do we, do we still have people who are loyal to your family, loyal to the cause, loyal to your careers, loyal to the commitment that you made before God, loyal to the commitment that you made to church? Do we still have that kind of people? Eh? Do we have people who are loyal? I mean, I'm loyal. 
You can't move me. I'm loyal. I'm sold out. I'm standing for this. Come what may. I'm loyal. You know, if you have got to have a weakness, they have a weakness of being loyal. Once you, once you find that this is the right course to do, this is the right thing to do, if people say it's a weakness, let it be the weakness of being loyal. Say, man, I've got a weakness. What is your weakness? I'm too loyal. <laughs> Once I grab something, man, I'm in it. You'll hear how the Amplified defined that word. Mm -hmm. Of the tribe of Zebulon, there were 50,000 in military service mm. who could draw up in battle formation with all kinds of weapons of war and help David. Mm -hmm. Men with an undivided heart. <laughs> Men with an undivided heart. You know God answered you according to what you do, which is from your heart, right? With God, it's not what you think. It's about what is in your heart. That which is in your heart matters to God. When you come to church... We were teaching the brothers last week that how many people come to church with their heart? Because God looked in the heart. Then if God were to mark register even here, let's start here. How many people are here with their heart? If heaven is marking register, are you here? Are you here or when heaven is marking the register, you are somewhere? Ask the brothers, how many people do you think they do mass prayer on Sunday? Because mass prayer must be from the heart. And others, when prayer is going on, they are checking on the time. They are checking who's next coming. They are checking when are we finishing. I'm tired. Uh, correcting the words of what somebody is saying. I think they were supposed to say that. How many people do the mass prayer? How many people attend Sunday service? From morning to late. I'm talking about the heart. God don't mark your body. God don't mark your body. He mark your heart. Is your heart here. Because the Bible says where your heart is, your treasure will be also. We don't come to church by our bodies. Our bodies are transporting our hearts. But our hearts are the here. When you say you're from church, is it not heaven surprise you? Which church were you in? Were you in church? You, you never there. I saw you at church for five minutes on Sunday morning. The rest seven hours you're talking about. No, you were not at church. How many people come to church by their heart? How many people worship God with their heart? I told the brothers, they were crying. Say, for the first time today, can you pray to God with your heart? You have never prayed to God with your heart. For the first time today, can you say, Lord, hear my prayer. This is the first prayer that I'm making since I was born again. Because I've never prayed to you with my heart. I know. I've never gave with my heart. I've never loved with my heart. I've never, I know. People are seeing me here. And I was asking myself, how many messages did I preach from my heart? If heaven were to give me my dossier to say, out of so many messages that you preach, how many messages did I preach from my heart? I ask worshippers, how many songs did you sing with your heart? How many services did you render to God with your heart? How many people did you greet with your heart? Some of you greet you, don't even wait for the response. Hi, Baba. <laughs> Please, where is the heart connection to what we do? Where is the heart connection? Divided heart, divided loyalties. I can be at church and be thinking somewhere else. The troop cannot move forward. The reason why the troop cannot move forward is because the bodies are moving forward, but the hearts are not in the marching orders. The hearts are somewhere else. When we say fathers, we are meeting, yes, we come, we congregate, but how many fathers are here? Ask your neighbor, are you here? Are you sure? If we were to ask heaven now, are you sure? It's a serious matter. The 
David was not given people of disloyal. David was not given people of double-mindedness and double heart. He was given people. Double heart. Do we have them? It's like it's, it's like some of you want to run away from this tribe. Don't run away from this tribe. Men not of double purpose, but stable and trustworthy. I learned this. You know when you say, you can claim how much trustworthy you are. You can say it no matter how you want to say it. It is the person that you are trustworthy to who is supposed to tell you whether you are trustworthy or not. You can come here and tell us that you are trustworthy. Your wife knows. It's your wife. It's your children. Who knows? You can say, oh, me, oh, you see, I'm loyal. Me, oh, hey, oh, you need trusted people. Oh, I am trusted. But it is your wife. It is your children. It is the person you are trusted to. The person that you are trusting to. When you say, I am trusted person. If I'm saying I'm trusted, I'm trusted to you. So I'm trusted. And I'm dealing with you. It's you. Who's supposed to tell whether I'm trusted or not? I'm not supposed to advertise myself. It's you say, you see that one? He's trusted. I know. How do you know? I saw it when he was doing it to me. Most of us, we are trusted to ourselves. And it ends with ourselves. But people around us, they don't know. Some of us, you can say, that man is trustworthy. <laughs> I remember when I went home. The younger, I, I love that example. The younger brother of my father were doing the program of a funeral. Then he wanted people who will, somebody will welcome people. He said, oh, yeah, no, I can do that. Oh, no, I know. Everybody around there said, ah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Let it not be. <laughs> <laughs> I say, my goodness. Do you know what people know about you? Where trust is concerned. <laughs> yeah, people say, no, no. Let it not be him. And he was not part of the program. But these people, they did not have double purpose. They did not have divided hearts. They were loyal. Let's continue. Let's go back to NLT and continue. Let's read verse 36. We are about to finish now. This is another tribe. Verse 36. From the tribe of Asher, there were 40,000 trained warriors all prepared for battle. These ones, they were trained. Hmm? These ones, they were trained. We must acknowledge amongst us, there are people who are trained. And they are trained for us. Okay? They are trained for us. Let us not discourage them. They are necessary part of the body. They are necessary part of the army. Part of the army for the army to move forward. Amongst us when we live, we must know those who are trained. We must know those who, are, who see. You know, it's not like one replaces the other. This is not, don't say, oh, as long as I'm trained, then I cannot be loyal. It's, we are not talking about that. We are moving in the same spirit. And we want to reach the very same destiny. It's just that all of us, we cannot do the same thing. Others must do that. Others must do that. God said, Moses, because now you're about to go, call the elders of the church. And I will cause you to deposit the spirit that is in you, in them. So that they will see the way you are seeing. They will be able to understand the weight of you as a leader. So that they will continue to be loyal. You see when you don't understand the weight of your leader. You can criticize your leader. Believe you me. If you don't understand. You can, you can say whatever you want to say. But when you've got the spirit of your leader. And you understand the weight that the leader is carrying. Then you understand that I must do my part. 
I must never move because it is important and necessary for me for this to continue to move forward. Most of us, we don't have that. Maybe because we are not trained as far as number of things is concerned. The day you will understand the heart of your leader, you're going to take it serious that way that which God put in you and where God placed you, you will take it very serious. That it's important. Because it's not even about the leader. It is God who placed that leader. And wha what happened when the leader succeed? What happened to the followers? What happened when the leader failed? So what is the easiest way for the whole people to succeed? Hmm? Yeah, this brother is talking. To support the leader. Why? Because he's leading the crew. When the leader succeeds, everyone is blessed. Let's clap hands for Jesus. <laughs> the Bible says when the anointing is flowing from the from Aaron's head, it comes to the beard, and then it comes to the skirt. Right? That's how it flow. If you discourage your leaders, you discourage everybody, you become critical and suspicious of everybody who's leading you, then what you're simply doing, you say, our going forward, our moving forward is not necessary. When your leader succeed, you succeed. And I want you to see, these men, because they were trained, they knew. Let's read verse 38. Verse 38. <coughs> All these men came in battle array to Hebron with a single purpose. <laughs> of Hold on. Hold on. They come with a what? Single purpose. They were seeing one thing. They were looking at one thing. This is, can I ask, his will fathers, do we have single purpose? Brothers, do we have single purpose? What is our purpose? Build up, build up. Do we all know? Is it what we are doing? Huh? Is it what we are doing? We must have single purpose. Then we'll achieve single language, common language. Once we see things the same way, the right way, wherever we are, whether it's in our families, whether it's in the church, can we see things the same way? What if I'm seeing this and my wife is seeing the other? And Isaac is seeing the other? What will happen in that family? And God is not the author of? Confusion. It means somebody has authored that confusion and we have allowed. The easiest way to open the door for the devil is to fail to achieve singleness of purpose. Tell your neighbor, I beg you. When it comes to this one, it's very serious. Let's see things the same way. All right? Singleness of purpose. Let's finish it. What All was their these purpose? men came in battle array to Hebron with the singleness, single purpose of making David the king over, Isra over all Israel. Yes. In fact, everyone in Israel agreed that David should be their king. <laughs> Can you hear that? In fact, everyone in Israel. Look at this. It started with this man. This man had singleness of purpose. Their singleness of purpose encouraged the whole of Israel to believe that surely David must be the king. The whole of Israel look at these warriors. These warriors, they've got singleness of purpose. What about us? Also, we agree with the soldiers. We agree with the warriors. Can the church agree with the fathers? Hmm? <laughs> Can his will look at the fathers and the sons at his will? Everybody say, we agree. Let's build up. We agree. 
let's remove obstacles. We are agreeing. Let's prepare the way. You don't know where God has placed you. Last time we said the standard is elevated. There are people who just have to come in this church and look at the fathers, how they do things. And they say, hey, I'm in. I'm in. If fathers here do like this, I'm in. If brothers here, they do like this, I'm in. But where we are now, where we are now, can, is it so? Is the day today that when you go to pray, let's pray that Lord help us to achieve that. And as I'm saying, it will need practical, practical steps to do, not just to pray about it. Practical step to do. You know, I love it. The Bible says, these people, in fact, let's finish in chapter 13. From verse 1 up to verse 4. Because even people even brought food to the soldiers to say, you know what? The way you are doing things, we are excited and we are challenged. We want to support you. Let's hear what David said. From verse 1 to 4. David consulted with all his officials, including the generals and captains of his army. Then he addressed the entire assembly of Israel as follows. Hold on, you see? He's addressing them, he's calling them, he's acknowledging them that we have this department, we have this department in this army. And then he go to the entire assembly of Israel. And he had one message to all of them. He's not double-tongued, he's not changing, twisting words. Let's hear what he said. If you approve, and if it is the will of the Lord our God, let us send messages to all the Israelites throughout the land. You see, if you do what? If you approve. Who? Who's, who? He's asking who? The assembly. If you approve... And if it is what? The will, the will of, God. of God. Not just what I think. If it is the will of God, and if you approve, then let us go and tell them. Do you approve? Do you approve that the grace is real? Is it the will of God? Yes. Can we go and tell them? Eh? <laughs> well, today we are approving. Thank God. We had an approval <laughs> of the captains and the generals of God. Yes. If you approve and if it is the will of the Lord our God, let us send messages to all the Israelites throughout the land. Yes. Including the priests and Levites in their towns and pasture land. Yes. Let us invite them to come and join us. Listen to that. Hey, if, if we were to invite people to come and join us in a conference or in a father's, father's meeting like this, when they go, can they be speaking what we speak or behaving twisted tongues? If I were to send you and you and you and you to tell them, when they come, will they be speaking one language? Or you're going to be telling them something, you're going to be telling them something, telling them something. When they come here, now they follow Apollos, Cephas, and Paul. You see? Then you just cause division in the church. Hmm? Can we go? Are we in a position where we can go to ask them to join us? When they come here, are they going to find us in singleness of purpose? Or we still have some work to do? <laughs> Let's start today. Yes. Let's continue. It is time to bring back the ark of our God for we neglected it during the reign of Saul. Yeah, we neglected the presence of God. Yes. The whole assembly agreed to this. Amen. For the people could see it was the right thing to do. Do you hear that? It was an it's not it was not a questionable thing. Everybody can see this message. We can hear it is the right thing to do because it's coming from the people that are not divided. It's coming from people who are speaking with one language. They are doing the same thing. 
they are walking in the very same spirit. They are all moving forward. It is the right thing to do. Let the presence of God come back. Even for God to bring his presence, he looked down on people. Are you, in, are you in unison? You can call for the presence of God to fall on the fathers no matter how you want. God, he looked first. Are you in oneness? Because what I want to bring is not just for you. It's for the whole world. But are you standing in one purpose, singleness of the heart? So that you can call others and they join you. God wants to bring people here. God has already aligned people for his will who are supposed to come and help us to achieve what God has purposed concerning his will. But if we're not going to obey God, we will pray and pray he's not going to send them. In Hebron, David didn't pray. He obeyed God. And God sent all these armies.